Do you live too far away from a Universal Studios theme park? Are you too poor to afford a ticket to enter Universal Studios? Do you own a Nintendo GameCube? If you answered yes to these questions, then today's game, which is a mouthful to say, Universal Studios Theme Park's Adventure, which I will now shorten to Ustpa, will be perfect for you. This, of course, would hold true if you're fine with exploring a confusingly structured version of the Japanese park, with park attractions only updated to how it was in 2001. Acting is one of the weirdest forms of advertising it wasn't surprising that return offender Kemco had an involvement in this game. Let's see how much I can hate the first video game based on a theme park and get into the meat of the video. Sorry vegetarians and vegans, you can't watch past this point. The basic premise of the game is you play as one of six selectable children to be let loose into the corporate world known by the public as Universal Studios and, in theory, are allowed to explore the park as much as you desire. I say in theory because after riding one of the attractions, lines will be present at all the other rides for the rest of the game, like Woody Woodpecker was informed by security that you hadn't bought a ticket and decided to fuck with you. In order to ride the attractions, you do as Woody's bidding, which is to collect enough points to spend on overpriced merchandise relating to the ride, and it feels like the most out of touch system someone could have put in a video game. Showing up to the ride with the respective hat on will allow you entry, as that lets Woody know you've lined his pockets with cash. An e-pass may also be purchased to allow a one-time entry into a ride. I don't see why that should be available to people who have bought their way into the park, unless Woody ritualistically forces all parentless children found in the park to go through this hassle. Points may also be earned by grinding unlocked rides, shaking the hands of costumed characters, and picking up garbage. What, Woody, wasn't it enough that he's forced to buy your sweatshop produced merchandise? You also have to force this kid to perform child labour? Most of the time that you shake the hand of a mascot, it looks like they're rubbing you down, like the underpaid Chinese man underneath is copping a feel. The actual objective of the game is to collect all the stamps and letters, with the stamps being collected through completing the rides and a quiz, whereas the letters are found throughout the park. With each location being more cluttered than an office worker's desk, finding these letters is easier said than done, and even with my eyes pressed to the screen, the singular pixel that represents these collectibles could simply be mistaken for a fleck of dirt on the screen. I love that the trademark for Universal Studios is largely shown next to the rest of the letters you've collected. Just to drive home, this is a licensed game. The quiz that you take asks questions about the most specific and minute things, that it would make someone with an identical memory who's seen all the Universal films have a hard time answering it. After you complete the quiz, you unlock sliding picture puzzle games and a concentration game, but since they had nothing to do with the park, I simply didn't waste my time on them. Just navigating the park is more frustrating than it would be in real life, as the camera angle changes frequently and the confusing layout will never allow you to get a sense of direction, no matter how long you play. Invisible walls litter the game more than the park goers, and could very well be planks of wood with the park drawn on them like in cartoons. The map provided is completely useless as it shows your general location and would have been just as useful if it was a white A4 piece of paper with a red cross and you're here written on it. It seems the playable child is going through a Universal Studios indoctrination as any other park goer you talk to spouts praise for the rides and instills the idea to collect trash into your head. As if they went through the same process to continue to come back to the park to give Woody his residual income. Some sprites pretending to be people were obviously never meant to be viewed in HD, but I'll give the game props for having a staff member constantly vibrating if you have the rumble pack on. The only person that doesn't spurt out anything less than the utmost praise for the park is a woman who has lost her phone, and when you are going to bring it back to her, she calls you up to tell you to meet at another location. I was kind of hoping when you return it to her, she'd fist bump you and thank you for returning her trap phone. Sort of like this game, I've been preventing you from getting to the rides, so let's go to them. The Waterworld ride is nothing but a 5 second and clip of a horribly CG'd plane stunt that closes when it gets to night time, which is when you've collected half of the stamps. I completely understand why it shuts down, as you can spam this game as frequently as possible and I'm sure the stuntman would be in need of a break. The rest of the rides have an opening cinematic to hype up the mediocre minigame to follow and features the screeching vocals of Woody as he explains the gameplay and controls to you. The Jaws ride sees you defend a boat from the shark by throwing the various objects on deck at it. I think that someone should have told Martin Brody that instead of throwing the oxygen tank into the shark's mouth, he should have pegged it at the shark's skull to cave it in. Even if you do stand next to the edge of the boat and the shark bites a chunk out, you won't die. It's as if the shark wants to drown you by sinking the ship. I know that the developers wouldn't want every game to be a cutscene of the ride like Waterworld, but imagine how scary it would be if you went to the Jaws ride at Universal and were knocked out and transported to a boat in the middle of the ocean. 
The ET game sees you play the iconic bike riding scene and I pity Elliot if his bite was that hard to handle in the film. The boost pads near jumps are paramount for getting a decent time, but you need to position it perfectly and with the angle you're at, mixed with the controls, you crash more times than not. I'm pretty sure you're given a prop bicycle as ET doesn't so much as flinch when you crash. The unsafe bike as well as the fucking landslides going on during the ride were probably all a ploy by Woody to sell you the ET band-aids afterwards. The Jurassic Park game sees you at the back of a jeep gunning down dinosaurs with bullets and heat seeking rockets but don't worry a single hair on your head these are tranquilizers. This doesn't explain why many explosions are present when you defeat the velociraptors but hey call it a tranquilizer if the discharge blast just so happens to knock out whatever you're targeting. The aiming reticule is just slightly off from where you're aiming at like someone with a lazy eye trying to look at something so you are quite reliant on the homing missiles to get through it. I've researched how fast these dinosaurs were and nothing against female drivers but they shouldn't be catching up to us if you're driving like you're about to be devoured worse than a virgin eating out a woman for the first time. The Back to the Future ride sees you playfully crash the DeLorean into the one that Biff stole to remind him that stealing from Woody has severe repercussions. I would complain about how hard it is to turn around sharp corners in this game, but it is a child driving so I won't judge his driving too much. You do travel to various locations throughout time to try and mix it up, but the core gameplay is too bland in the first place. The Wild 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 West ride sees you verse 3 professional marksman and expects you to win a shooting match against them. Your aiming reticule is as sensitive as my eyes to sunlight after a night of drinking and to so much as keep up with the insanely accurate AI, you need to use exploits like shooting the bonus targets. It's kinda weird that these grown men get so happy and worked up that they beat a child at shooting when the pistol is half the size of your arm. Last but certainly with no value is Backdraft and sees you save various people from a burning building by putting out fires. Looks like Woody put this in the training so that when the preservative filled park food catches on fire no large amounts of damage will occur to the park. The camera is the biggest problem in this mini game, which is saying something considering the whole building is going up in flames and will oftentimes lead you into running into fires you cannot see. There will be times when you'll be spraying a patch of fire for ages, but it only looks like that because of the camera angle, when in reality you'll be hosing down the nearby wall as the confused citizens look on. You will also find fire extinguishers that have a one time use, but you can only use it grounded in the spot you activate it, like the kid was scared the power of the fire extinguisher would make him fly back uncontrolled. Controllably. Halfway through, fireballs will be shot at you by the fires, and goddamn, is the fire loud and sounds like ear rape videos. When collecting all 8 stamps, you need to trudge your way back to Woody at the start to kick off the end cutscene. I don't know why I didn't just kick off the end cutscene as soon as I was done, it's like the game thought I wanted to play its mediocre rides one last time. What's wrong? One more time. Just like the movie based games before it, Ustapa proves that any creative licenses put into a video game will make it turn out as rancid as carbonated milk. Artificially lengthening the game by locking off the rides and making you do arbitrary tasks to fill up some time is made worse when the rides themselves are terrible and finish soon after starting, like me during sex. While you may complain that I spent too little time talking about the mini games, I was simply mimicking how little you spend in them during the game. The map was one of the most frustrating I've had to navigate in the game and was frequently lost and angrily wondering where to go and where the last fucking letter was. It didn't help that the rides were completely underwhelming for the effort to put in to ride them in the first place. Horribly shambled together, Aspa shows how utterly confused marketing teams are at thinking up video game ideas. No need to wait, I'll take you straight to the updated list now in three columns, please. Please, don't compliment me too much in the comments. Now, if this video gets 50k likes, I'll re-release smallpox with patches to combat vaccines. Welcome to the wild, wild, wild west. We gunmen here are waiting to challenge you. They heard that you are good. The targets are in the city. Aim with the control stick. You can shoot with the L or R button. When you run out of bullets, use the A button to reload the gun. Good luck!